Welcome back Welcome to the HiRail AR-15 gas block machining video series. In this video 7 we're going to actually be able to uh, use the fixture plate number 2 that we machined in the last video. So starting out here with just some cam simulation so you can see what's going to be happening here. Uh, there's what we have left over from the previous machining operations affixed to fixture plate number two. So the first thing we have to do is gut out all that material that we don't need there in the middle. And I'm doing that with a 3 8 inch roughing end mill. And I played around with the idea of just cutting it all out in one big pass. But I don't want to do that because doing that would leave a slug of material that wouldn't fall away and clear completely from the part and it would run the risk of uh, crashing my tool so I want all that material to end up as fine little chips so here are just some of the other machining operations that I'm doing just putting a little clearance under the Picatinny rail there to make sure uh, nothing binds you know like no front sight base or front sight flip up front sight that you would put on there would hang up or bind. So just putting a little relief there. Um, cutting the bayonet lug grooves right there. I cut the grooves, the, the slots first and then I go in and finish the sides. And that's what that'll look like. I guess the more exciting part of this video is going to be the 3D machining that we'll get to later. So I'll kind of show it here. So this is, there's a few preparatory cuts just to prepare the material for the 3D machining. So there's the first one I'm doing. It's a horizontal finishing tool path with a 7% step over. And I didn't quite get the, uh, simulation uh, stock material removal ordered there so it's, it looks like it's gouging through a lot of material but that material will be gone by the time it'll look like that by the time it starts the 3D path so what I'm doing is just all these 3D paths are doing is just removing a little bit of material here and there to save weight but also to um, round over a lot of the sharp edges and make it look less blocky and just give it some aesthetic appeal. But this is also a great way to save a little bit of weight here and there. Just don't need that material there. So I go through there and I just kind of chew it away. And I and I designed the gas block in such a way that it sort of mimics the same um, aesthetic contours and stuff as the AR-15 platform itself. It's not completely angular and blocky like a lot of these machine parts, um, but it does have some of that, and it also has some nice rounded curves and things. So. That's sort of what I'm going after here, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do that. So, why not? I, I feel that it's worth it. So here I'm just taking off that corner edge there, making it nice and round. And I, uh set up some containment regions for the 3D profiling operations just so it doesn't just get out of hand trying to 3D profile everything. I just wanted to hit certain key points on the model there that I wanted uh, machined to uh, make the use of machining time most efficient. And I'm kind of happy to say that the actual machined part looks better than this model simulation. The model is accurate but it's somewhat crude in its representation. So it looks like there's a lot of lines and 
just chatter remarks and stuff which aren't actually there in the model or sorry aren't actually there in the machine part so here's the next tool path and the reason I split them up between like the front side and back side there on each leg is uh, when I when I try to do it as one whole region that does both sides simultaneously there's a lot of retracts and rapids back and forth which I wanted to avoid so I just kinda drew a containment region around the front and the back so it avoids all that saves time I'm a little bit nervous about this area here because it actually is going to be plunging and gouging out a lot of material but we'll see how it goes and there's a uh, basically what we'll have left over and I'm not doing the lightning window in this video because I don't have the tools for it yet I'm sort of writing down a, another large tooling order at the moment okay here we go with the slotting operation I think it turned out pretty well it's a fairly aggressive cut and I wasn't exactly sure about the uh, rigidity of the setup but it seems to be okay even though it starts to chatter there when it enters the bore I don't think it's that bad and the end mill is fine after these cuts didn't have any damage to it so I think I'll just stick with it for a while and see, see how it works Now I could have also done this this operation here and just one full depth pass, but G Wizard was telling me I was getting a little bit too much deflection in the tool, so I decided not to do that because I don't want to break or chip any of my tools. I think it would have handled it okay. It just would have been. It just had the potential to be harder on the flute to the end there. So here is uh, coming back and just cleaning up those uh, internal corner radii and finishing the surface and this didn't work out too well. Um, that end mill I'm using there is a quarter inch end mill and the flute tips were already completely chipped off but I pulled it out of the broken tool bin since I was just going to be side milling with it and the depth clears the flute tip. Problem is when it hits those internal 90 degree corners um, it just chipped the hell out of the flutes. So I'm not sure what to do about that yet. Either slow it way down or get those corners with a smaller tool. Which I'm a little bit hesitant to try to do. I might just slow the whole thing down. So here we come in and uh, mill the slots for the bayonet lug. Because as you know, the fixing a bayonet to your lug needs to be a highly precise operation. I'm just joking.
but uh, I did get a little chatter there, so I started uh, backing off on the feet on the I'm sorry the spindle speed to see if that helped, and it seemed to help a little bit. And I think if I just kept going with it, it would have fixed that issue. But I I just reset it and went back to full speed the remainder of the cut. But it sounds fine, the end mill looks fine. No chips or anything. After I cut this, I realized these cuts didn't seem deep enough. And I went back and I checked everything, and it turned out I indexed my reference point off of a different uh, reference point than all the previous operations. And uh, so I went back and fixed that and then redid the cuts to the appropriate depth. That won't be a problem in the future. It's only a problem on this one because this is sort of a sacrificial gas block I'm making. Mainly because that bore was off center when I, it was one of the ones that were off center. So it's not going to be used, so I'm just using it as practice. But uh, in the future, when the bores are all on center, it, they'll all be the same and it shouldn't be an issue. Like right here, this, this relief cut is not cutting deep enough. I decided to go back and do another finish pass. You can see the chip flutes on that end mill there. Um, I wanted to slow everything down a little bit and uh, just see if that helped. And it and it did, and I think it needs to be slower still. But uh, it's not that bad. I, I, I do think it needs to be slower, and, I, and with a new end mill, it should work out okay. These are just those preparatory cuts for the 3D profiling. Um, after I did the 3D profiling in the simulation model, there ended up being some raised areas that weren't hit by the ball mill, so I just wanted to go in there and flatten them out. Okay, here we start with the 3D profiling operation. This one is with a 7% step over. And the, the back leg is with a 5% step over. And I just wanted to see if there was a huge difference. And there wasn't really a huge difference, but the 5%, as expected, did leave a nicer finish. It was, uh, it was so nice, it almost looks like it's uh, injection molded or something. And with the 7% step over, you can, on the back side of this way, you can see a little bit of the scallop, which is not a big deal. And all these tool marks will clean up after the part is sandblasted.
since we can't really see this too well from the coolant, I'm going to go ahead and speed things up. Turned out very, very well. Very pleased with that. So, uh, what I one of the things I had to do that I didn't want to do, but I was forced to, was I had to undo that tool, that uh, eighth-inch ball mill, out of the collet chuck and pull it out about uh, a tenth of an inch because uh, my model, my uh, simulation was telling me I was going to get a a tool holder collision between that nut that screws on the collet or screws down the collet and the fixture plate, the top of the fixture plate there. So I just calculated essentially the, the minimum distance I could pull that tool out and have the tool holder clear the fixture plate. And that's what I did. So as you know, you don't want to have uh, more stick out than uh, is necessary for the cut, but in this case, there was really no way around it. And it didn't seem to hurt anything as far as chatter goes, so I think it'll be fine. And this ML survived <laughs> all these cuts. The only one that didn't survive was that quarter inch end mill that uh, had all the flutes chipped on the side. But all these little tiny cutters and everything just worked out well and they're all still perfectly intact. So I feel that these uh, cuts were a success. A lot of them I was kind of worried about, especially around the back area there. But uh, they all worked out fine. And another thing that will happen is that lightning window will be cut in this operation, but I just don't have the tools for it yet. I had to go back and modify the model a little bit to make that go a lot smoother, but I'll detail that when I get to it. Here's just some images. Oh, that's a before image. And here's an after image. Uh, after the front part is done. And here's just some images after it's all done and taken off. It looks great. The, the camera makes it look much worse than it actually is in person. As many of you know, but um, I think it worked out great and um, sandblasting will certainly clean that up and make it look beautiful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit my website right there at warmachinellc.com. Thanks for watching and see you next video.